Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting. place to go visit. I've come here off and on over the years many, many times, but this time I've gone to all four corners in search of the perfect place. This place has it all for a painter. We have a beautiful foreground, beautiful trees, and Mount Rainier, stunning. In this light, we're sure to have a beautiful painting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take a smaller brush this time. I want to make a more complicated sketch than I usually do. Now. We're going to put in all of these little details and these little nuances in our sketch. I'm going to very quickly sketch that in. Now notice I haven't come up with a hard line. And I do this on purpose because I want to have some flexibility. If I put in a, a line with a pencil or a very strong painting line, I'm going to feel like I'm stuck with that line throughout my painting. Also, by taking a, a paper towel and putting it into a little bit of turpentine, it helps you actually form another dimension to your sketch. You can wipe off areas and give the illusion of these glaciers. You can also add a lot of turpentine to your brush and wipe off that way also. You can see it actually starts giving you some half tones. I want to lay in the base for my trees in here. And notice how dark. I enjoy doing the sketch as much as I enjoy the painting itself. Now on the right, we have some large trees. And I'm going to bring these right up. They're going to actually tower over the mountain itself. This will actually give us a scale of how big we are in relationship to the mountain. I'm going to take a little more turpentine and I'm wetting the whole foreground. One of the great things about painting outdoors is while you're sitting still for a while, nature comes out and visits you. I enjoy working outdoors because if you're still for a long time, all of a sudden birds and deer and bear and animals that run away because they see people in the forest come back out and they realize you're not really a threat. There's almost a fine line between painting and sketching. I think we've slowly crossed over that. I'm putting in more and more detail, and I'm getting the mountain to be a little bit more accurate. Now I'm adding a little bit more highlight, and I'm going to highlight only half of my glacier. This half will remain in shadow, and that will help make this area of the mountain stick up. This is what's going to give my painting form and dimension are not just the highlights and shadows, but where they fall. And when you're outdoors, you can see this a lot better than when you're working with photography. And now with that done, it's time for us to put in our sky. I'm going to take a larger brush, I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to mix white and blue and a little bit of this gray color. I don't want to have a blue-blue sky, I want a kind of a cool yet grayish sky. Now this is going to change the entire appearance of the painting. And work it right up to the edge of the mountain. Now in this area here, I want to be sure to, to get a darker shadow. And what I'm going to do is add more white to my sky back here. Now I want to get this color really light, but yet blue. Now as this color goes up towards the left-hand side of my canvas, I'm going to be adding more blue to it. And when I'm adding more blue to my color here, I'm also adding a little more gray. 
I'm going to go a little bit into my trees. I'll put them in a little bit later. And as I go to the top right hand side, I'm going to add more of that dark blue color. Now as we work towards the right side of our canvas, the sun's coming from that area and we want to warm up the sky a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to my bluish color. Now I'm taking this warm color and I'm mixing it into my blues. As the atmosphere gets closer to the sun, it warms up. Now with our sky done, we're ready to start working on the next layer of mountains. This layer is going to be a silhouette layer. It's a little darker. It's going to have a lot of blues in it. And we're going to mix up our gray color, and it's a greenish color. So we're going to mix up blue and yellow together. We're going to add that to our gray, and then we'll start painting this in as a solid shape. The great thing about painting areas that are dark is that there's not a lot of detail in them, so you can paint them very quickly. The main thing we're going to concentrate on is the ridge itself. On the ridge, there are these wonderful pine trees that poke their heads up, and we're going to very quickly put those in. And now with our background trees done, we're ready to start working on the next layer of trees. These trees are a little further back than the foreground trees, but yet they're in front of the background trees that we just finished. And I want to give the illusion right in this place that there's a little brighter light. So I'm going to introduce more white into this color. And I'm going to bring the brush stroke up, and I'm going to create the same type of tree that we did in the distance. And then as this ridge goes up, we want to darken it because it's up against a light background. And that's going to set the entire mountain way in the distance. And we want to bring these details up the same way as we did on the other mountain. Now notice that this color is darker in value than the, the trees in the background. And I'm just flicking the brush up. Now these are nice tall trees. So with large brush strokes, place them in. I'm going to introduce even more blue to it. And I want to paint the trees on the right hand side as a mass also. Now these trees are going to be in front of the painting. So they absolutely have to be the darkest. So there's absolutely no white in these colors. Okay, now I want to work on some of these washes coming down to my river. I want to switch to a smaller brush and with my gray color, I don't want these to be in strong sunlight. I'm trying to remember what it was like when I first came out here. And this is such a beautiful color. I'm going to put this in as my mask color for my shadows in the riverbed. It would be relatively impossible to paint every one of these boulders individually. So what you need to do is develop kind of a rhythm and a technique to kind of create the illusion of what all of these boulders look like. I want to curl my stroke, and I'm creating the round feeling of riverbed rocks. Now my base color is the shadow of these boulders. So you can see, just with a flick of the brush, how all of a sudden these boulders look round. Now with the brighter color, let's start getting some of the highlights in. Look at how much brighter this color is. Same stroke, and while we have this color, Let's go ahead and highlight a little bit of these washes. And now with the detail done in our washes, we're ready to start putting the highlights into our trees. We're going to switch to our small fan brush, and we're going to mix yellow and blue together and a lot of white. And we want to create absolutely the brightest light green we can possibly make. It's just going to make the trees pop out. Now to the right of this highlight, we want to work a little bit into our trees in the foreground. It's a little reverse painting. And you can see how my tree branches are starting to form themselves. Can you see how this becomes a central focal point? Right in the middle area of my painting, the viewer is going to follow this, this stream right up to the area of light. A lot of times, artists don't like to use fan brushes because they tend to have a certain geometrical look to them. They kind of all look the same. And that comes from using 
the whole front of the fan brush. What we're doing is using just the corner and I'm just lightly stroking and bringing in shadows into these trees. I'm switching to a smaller brush and I'm going to get in some of the trunks. The trunks in the areas of light are going to be darker and the trunks in the areas of shadow are going to be a little lighter. And now with the detail finished on our distant trees, we're ready to start working on our foreground trees. I'm going to switch to a smaller detail brush and I'm going to mix my dark gray and start putting in the trunks. Nice steady strokes all the way up. Again, this is what is going to establish scale. Now with that done, we're ready to start working on the branches. We're going to switch back to our fan brush, load it up with the darkest of dark colors as we possibly can. These trees are going to silhouette onto the background. This will definitely set this massive mountain way in the distance. I want to leave this a little looser because I want to get some branches in my trees. I'm going to do that with a little smaller brush, a few little dead branches. Right now there's wonderful light coming through and hitting some trees in this mass and I want to highlight them. I think that it will add a real beautiful effect to my dark in the right hand side. And now with the highlights in this area, we want to put in some of the branches. Hide some of those trunks with a little extra foliage. Make a few of them a little lighter and a few of them silhouetted against the light. Now with all the detail done in the foreground of our painting, we're ready to sign the painting and conclude this wonderful day at Mount Rainier. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. Paintingfromnature.com a website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. Paintingfromnature.com